what's up guys ken here again and yes i know it has been a while i've not like um uploaded a long video like this um that's because i've been occupied with traveling school research and all of that yeah the past month has been really um challenging but yeah we keep rolling and today i am back with another video and this one is my experience flying from ghana to kenya again yeah this is my second time in kenya first time was from germany to kenya and now from ghana to kenya i'm gonna be sharing with you my experience and not just my experience but also like um tips and requirements you need flying between these two countries so if it's your first time here my name is um ken i'm sierra Leonean history and politics student currently traveling within african continent researching on articolonizers and political challenges in africa pre doing a post-colonialism so if you are somebody that is interested in history um travel and at the same time politics this is the right channel feel free by being part of the community by subscribing to this channel yeah that being said without wasting time let's jump right into it <music> guess who is all set to the airport yeah um i woke up in time i didn't oversleep i think that's why i look a little bit pale but yeah i'll be good um this is just like something you should like get ready for if you are planning of becoming a nomad or whatsoever you're gonna be having less sleep because you don't want to miss your flight uh, and all of that for example last night i went to bed let's say around one to two and i woke up four imagine yeah but i'm all set i just ordered my boat now and i said let me do like short video and all of that see you at the airport otherwise see you in kenya bye bye I'm now at the airport. I came a bit earlier, so my check-in time is um, 30 minutes. I'm just waiting for them to start and then I'll proceed. So I just um, bought on the flight and we are about to take off very soon. Yeah. See you in Nairobi. Now, let's talk about my experience at the airport in Ghana, Accra to be specific. And I am bringing this particular issue up because it's not the first time I've experienced this and yeah like i already say we can't be um going about you know saying africa is the best um continent or the richest continent on earth but at the same time being hypocrite to ourselves we know like if you're in africa <laughs> you know you know like the struggle the negativity is like the, the corruption all of that holding this continent backward so in as much as we really want to show the beauty of africa I think we should not be also ignoring the things like pulling us backward and one of these things like this um corruption and also like um discrimination among we the africans you know i always say the government has a role of playing like make a difference in the country or in africa but at the same time there's also like an individual role like ask yourself as a as an africa what difference are you gonna make like you know areas you find yourself the job you are doing like you know what is the what is the difference like what what change like do you want to make if you really want to like um enjoy the africa or like you don't want to like um travel out or whatsoever yeah i'm bringing this up like i said it's not the first time I'm, I'm experiencing it so it's better i raise uh an awareness about this and and i'm pretty sure it's not just me 
other people also have experienced this and all of that the way like africans treat their fellow africans at the airport i have been given 30 days to stay in ghana even though i am eco citizen and i am eligible for 90 days and afterwards i have the right to extend giving reasons and proof for my extension i explained to the lady at the immigration at the airport that um I'm gonna be staying for more than 30 days and giving me 30 days is not really gonna be good for me you know and she said I am the immigration lady I have the right to give you whatever I have to give you how many days I have to give you even though you are a core citizen and guess what was the reason because I was not in the position to give her lunch as she requested and honestly I really wanted to give her the lunch as she asked but the problem was i was having just 50 and 100 usd bills you know and come on even myself i, I don't just eat 50 usd or 100 usd for just lunch so let alone give you 50 usd or 100 usd for lunch you know because today i'm also like traveling a lot i'm a student i have to like spend a crisis also like very expensive before even coming i did my homework and all of that you know yeah she gave me the 30 days and i wanted to like avoid all the arguments and all of that so i accepted like the 30 days and move on and guess what that was not just the uh, first time the second time i came back to uh, ghana it was like the same thing because when i was in ghana i had to like also travel um to the neighboring country togo nigeria and from nigeria i flew back to ghana and when i came i was also like unfortunate to be in the queue of where she was you know I didn't actually know like she was even the one. I just got there like um, saw her. I remember oh that's the same lady. And this time she did not even like <laughs> ask for lunch or whatsoever. She just like stamped my uh, passport and gave me 30 days without even asking me. Then I proceed. I am really bringing this up because um, it's not the first time experiencing this at the airport, um, and it's also not, like not the first time experiencing this treatment, you know, of Africans treating their fellow Africans very negatively at the airport you know if you have been traveling within the African continent from one country to another you see how they give their best smiles like to the foreigners um, to the white people and all of that but when they see their fellow Africa they start being acting different or ask you for lunch but if you're not in the position like to give them what they ask for you see their you know behavior or reaction like change instantly you know but they don't give the same treatment to white people you know it's really sad that um till now you know africans are very um or are still being discriminative to their fellow africans but at the same time submissive to, to white people you know and i'm really more disappointed in ghana considering like um kind of like the history and all of that dr nkuma is from there and all of that i'm a researcher i see how Ghanaians uh, treat their fellow africans to so them if you're a foreigner you have to be white or from the west and all of that but if you are foreigner from another african country you see how they treat you you know I see how they um, perceive Nigerians. I know Nigeria have like their own um, record and all of that, but sometimes I also like being treated in Ghana, you know, as Nigerian. Like they are assuming I am Nigerian, so once they see me, they start like being prejudiced to me and all of that, you know, without even knowing me or whatever, you know. And like I said, I'm really um, disappointed in Ghana because looking at um, Dr. Nkrumah's um, history and his vision for Africa. One of the things he thinks that he believed that we all uh, change Africa is that this unity, you know, African being united, um, having like a free trade zone, like um, marketing our um, resources within the same continent, also having a unified army that will protect us against external threats, you know. Just look at um, Nkuma's uh, um, history and like the greatest like uh, Pan-Africanist on, on, on that. Then coming like in Ghana, experiencing this sort of um, discrimination and bad experience like you know you know I I, I was Ghana was Ghana is like my hope even like before I started like this whole uh, journey this trip and all of that. You know looking at how this sell uh, Ghana even like the Pan-Africanism like you know and all of that so I was like yes Ghana is like the place 
That's why I really like um, chose to like, stay in Ghana longer than other African countries. I really looked forward, you know. But while I was in Ghana, it's not really like what I've been like, you know, saying, you know, or what I've been expecting. Yeah, I know I, I have to like put my expectations like down and all of that, but yeah, it is way, 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 way beyond, you know, what, you know, anyone can um, experience in Ghana. The corruption, you know, how you know Africans like Ghanaians treat other Africans. If you're not American or you're not from any of like these countries or whatsoever, yeah, it's a shame. It's really a shame that I had to experience that uh, and have to like give this uh, um, review or share this kind of story with you guys. But yeah, like I said, um, it's good we create awareness about these things because otherwise. <laughs> It's gonna be keep happening, happening, and like, there will be no change. And like I said earlier, we can't just be saying Africa is the richest continent on earth. It's like uh, all of the kind of thing, but we are being hypocrites about things holding us backward. You know, we really have to like embrace this unity. We have to like really uh, treat each other, you know, nicely in order for us like to really um, find solutions to like the things um, holding us backwards in this continent you know ask yourself why do, why do you want to travel outside africa why do you think you know, outside is the best place because africa is not good and like i said earlier yeah the government leaders have a role to play but you as an individual also have a role it could be like even the little things how you like you smile to your fellow africa though know, that smile can go a long way you know just giving him that smile, giving him like the best treatment at the airport, he or she will feel like, oh, I am back home. It's different, like you know, you know, when I was in Germany, you know. And like I always say, like for us that have lived like in Africa and outside Africa, you know, there is something to compare. You know, when you're coming home, you know, it's different. You know, you wanna you really wanna feel home. You wanna like really see that it's a difference, like you coming back home. And yeah, it's unfortunate and. I think we really have a long space to grow, especially in this um, area of embracing unity. My last experience that was not really um, okay was about um, the yellow card, the yellow fever or the COVID um, card. Uh, yeah, speaking of yellow card, if you are planning of flying to Ghana, so these are things you need, the yellow card, um, proof of stay, like the reservation of your hotel or B&B, and also a return ticket if you're not a core citizen. If you're a core citizen, you are like visiting, you need to like show um, who you're going to be staying with or whatsoever. You just need to like prove um, reasons of your staying or reason why you don't have a return ticket. That is if you are a core citizen. The same with um, Kenya. If you're flying to Kenya, you also need the yellow card and also like um, hotel or B&B reservation and at the same time return ticket. You just need to have something to show that you are going to be getting out of uh, Kenya after three months depending on your visa requirements. I am Sierra Leone citizen, I am visa free to Kenya but at the same time I still need a um, return ticket. Even it could be like um, going to Tanzania or Uganda or whatsoever. So you, these are things you need flying to this country you return ticket proof of stay um at the same time yellow card you know yeah i also heard the guy at the um kotoka airport Accra airport was telling me now kenya request for at least 500 usd to show that you're gonna be taking care of yourself in kenya but i was really not uh, not agreeing with that because i told him it's not my first time in kenya the time i was there it they didn't need request for that and exactly when i came again they did not request for that i think it, it was just like the guy making things difficult for me the same way like he made the um, yellow card situation so difficult for me because i unfortunately lost my yellow card because the yellow card for example in germany when you have like the yellow fever vaccine they give you like the yellow card with that that same yellow card you have to like record your covid or uh, or uh, um, vaccine and all of that so unfortunately i lost uh, my yellow card 
because I've been traveling, transiting, and if you're a traveler, you already know how stressful it, it is, like going through the security check and all of that. So, um, along that, I dropped my yellow card. Where exactly? I don't know. But I was having photo of my yellow card, so I showed him at the airport that um, I don't have my yellow card with me. I lost it, but this is a photo of my yellow card. And unfortunately, like the date when I took like the vaccine it was not that like, um, um, clear on the photo. But I explained to him like this is the yellow card that we use, um, yeah, in Germany. So he insisted I should get the. Um, emergency yellow card uh, which is like 150 cities and i asked him to show me where exactly so um i went there yeah i paid the 150 cities and here comes another struggle again i paid the uh, 150 cities and um, they recorded my name for my passport and all of that and now the lady said about the dates you know you have to give us something so we can give you a date of like um two weeks ago because according to um the yellow fever uh, law you have to like um take the vaccine like two weeks before traveling then i was like if you guys know this is the law then why is it emergency here at the airport and people are paying 150 cities if you knew the date you are giving me today um it's it's not gonna be uh valid then why is it emergency you know i had another like struggle there you know they are wasting my time they were was even saying when is your checking time you need to pay otherwise we can just give you to this state and to this state um, it's not valid you, you cannot fly with this state you know to some point i gave up i'm like you know what you keep the um um the the yellow card i don't need it again i think i have to like miss my flight or whatever and when i miss my flight i'm not gonna like uh forgive you guys that you are the reason that i miss my flight because you, this is a you said emergency yellow card and you're also telling me that if you give me the date today <laughs> it's not like permitted to fly with it then what's the essence so let's just say yeah take your yellow card i'm gonna cancel my flight and all of that you know and then she was like but well, we've already like written your name on the um, yellow card take your yellow card i'm like no you take your yellow card and give him back my 150 cds and she was like it's not refundable and then i was like you know what you can also keep the 150 cds and also the yellow card so i don't but i don't really have another extra money to give you uh, 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 so i can have you can give me another date you know yeah, that was also another struggle there, you know, delay. The good thing is I even like uh, went to the airport like four hours to my flight because I'm already like now known with these struggles at um, African airports, like these struggles. So I always make sure I get to the airport four hours before my flight for all these struggles. Yeah, I ended up like getting the yellow card. I came um, to the guy and yeah, so I checked in and it was it took me almost like two to three hours to get to my boarding gate imagine yeah like i said flying within african continent it's not just expensive but the stress also you face as an african at this airport it's so 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 um um disappointing yeah but um ghana is really a beautiful country like the landscape like the history the culture the food you know that's i would not like this but that it's, it's really a beautiful country but just like um that there should be some kind of amend amendments of especially the prices the corruption um, and also like um the way Kenyans see other african countries you know however my flight to kenya was really smooth i arrived in nairobi safely and the immigration in Nairobi was really smooth yeah I passed through the immigration with no stress and afterwards I got picked up by Mpenze you have to be a Kenyan or know how to speak Kiswahili to understand what Mpenze is yeah um, I also got to my BMB safely and the next day I really didn't have um, much to do so I decided like, to go and hang out at my favorite mall in Nairobi
video that was just me sharing my experience at the airport and my experience with some of the Ghanaians I met that does not mean I am not gonna visit Ghana again I'm definitely visiting again whether you like it or not I'm coming back next year and at the same time that does not mean Ghana is not a place like you shouldn't visit yeah like I said it's a beautiful country beautiful landscape beautiful history culture the food is so good you know there are also a lot of open-minded and kind Ghanaians we definitely gonna meet I also like to meet um, open-minded and kind Ghanaians yeah but at the same time like I always say you need to like share you know not just one side of the story but also like another side of the story you know Africa of course is a beautiful continent it's like the richest continent you can think of but we don't also have to ignore the fact that there are a lot of challenges to this same continent that is even making the continent not even comfortable for Africans themselves that's why you see a lot of Africans want to travel outside the continent why do you think they want to travel yeah so we can change the narrative of Africa by not just showing beautiful photos or beautiful things about Africa but at the same time also attacking the things you know that is holding the continent backwards because that is even like the right way of changing the narrative because when we put stop to these things like put stop to corruption all kind of things then the continent you know we really change for good not just like being hypocrite and say oh look at this beauty of course there's beauty in Africa but the reality is Africans are also suffering like you know a lot like Africans are, are having challenges like in the continent if you're not being like being hypocrites or you're being really honest with yourself you have to look agree with the fact that there are a lot of challenges in Africa so like I said I am I'm somebody like really want the best for Africa so I've also realized that in as much as like we are talking about the beauty of Africa, we also need to be creating awareness about the things that is not being right in the continent. And one of the th one of the things is the corruption, the discrimination, like the uh, the division among ourselves in Africa. We also need to like be talking about these things a lot, create a lot of awareness about these things. Yeah. Um. But if you made it to this point of my video. I really want to appreciate you thanks a lot and i look forward to seeing you in my next video i will see how much i'm gonna be doing like to create a lot of videos in kenya because i really came for a lot of reasons um in kenya so yeah but i'm still gonna be squeezing to create more videos to make sure yeah i share some of my experience and the history and the politics also like here in kenya once again thanks for making it to this point in my video and peace.